Hey nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com. And I'm gonna go over the lab values, what you need to know with the BMP and what labs, um, the values that change continuously, whichever facility you work in, whatever school you're in, and what do you really need to know and how do you, you master this lab fishbone and to apply it in a, in a practice and in the NCLEX. So let's get into it. Okay. Uh, Basic metabolic panel, the basic lab values. It comes from my book found on nursingcamp.com. And um, if you're not a member, become a member today. If you want to click subscribe, subscribe, and uh, let's get into this course. This course is going to define all the labs in the BMP. And then we're going to talk about sodium, potassium, chloride, CO2, BUN, creatinine, and also the glucose. And then finally, we're going to look at the, um, what, what's important to know for the NCLEX and also in practice. So when we're talking about labs and we're talking about the numbers, that's an important concept because the concept is very different no matter where you go. And the numbers and the ranges are all over the place. There are some basic things that you need to know about the lab values. And I'm gonna teach you a method that I do uh, with my class and what I do in my clinical. And even in my clinical, in my class, I've changed lab values as, Practice has changed, and as uh, I see more NCLEX questions, so when you're looking at lab values, and if a school is saying you need to know these lab values at this range, those ranges are kind of a little bit vague, and NCLEX will not test you on vague. They're going to look at, um, you need to know this lab value, and they're going to give you a range that's way over the top of that range. Well, let's start with the first things, okay? So we have the BMP. So we start off with the BMP here. It's a fishbone, and the fishbone is chronic. And what I mean by chronic is mean every, every patient that is in the hospital would get this fishbone. And the reason that is, is it gives you a clear picture about what's going on with your patient. It's, it's truly the information that doesn't lie to you. It's exactly what it's about. It tells you what's in the blood and it tells you what compensatory, compensatory mechanisms are in play when dealing with this. And it could be in different ranges, whether it's peeing, puking, or pooping, or drains, or you know, is the patient sick? Are they sitting in bed, dehydrated, and all these types of things. So let's talk about the numbers. And the first column we're gonna talk about is sodium. Now, sodium is the first column, and that's the only true lab value that you need to know. And that lab range is 135 to 145. Now, we'll talk more about what's important, high versus low, and what you need to know, but this focus right now is just to work on what are the lab values? So I say that sodium is the only lab that you truly need to know, and that's the only one you need to memorize. Once you have that one memorized, you can move to the next, next value, which would be potassium, which is down here. And potassium is, you take down this three, you have three, and then you take down this five. And so that's 3.5, that's the low range. And then you take down this five, and you have five, and you take down this one and 5.1. So a potassium range is 3.5 to 5.1 milliequivalents. Now, NCLEX is not going to test you on whether you think it's milliequivalents or millimeters per deciliter or anything like that. They're just going to give you a range. And even then, they're very select about the ranges that you're going to pick. They're not going to give you a patient's potassium as 5.2 right? Because the ranges are pretty much, they understand they're vague out there and every hospital is very different. So if you have a professor that this is what you need to know, this, that, and the other thing for the NCLEX, that's not true because NCLEX is not going to say, okay, well, because at one hospital, it might be different. And potassium is one of those things where sodium tends to be a little bit across the board, 135 to 145. Now, potassium 3.5 tends to be the main number. However, 5.1, you might see 5.2, you might see 5.0. That's called gray. And what gray means is that's non-testable. We don't call the doctor up for a 5.2. We don't call a doctor up for a 5.1. So that's why it's very important when you're looking at lab values to look at what do I need to know? When am I going to be calling the doctor? Now, 5.5 is high, you know, six is high, seven, uh oh, holy crap, we need to put that patient on, you know, get that potassium off that patient. That makes it very acute. 
uh, low, that's also gray because sometimes, uh, you know, a 3.4, what's the underlying cause? You know, but a 3.0, we really worry about. So when you're looking at ranges, you want to have a general idea of the numbers. So when I approach these, this fishbone, I look at that and then I look at all the data out there. So I'll look at a lot of different books, um, a lot of lab value books, a lot of hospitals and different things like that. And the ranges are kind of gray. And I also look at a lot of NCLEX questions and NCLEX prep questions. And I see those numbers a little bit all over the place. So when you're looking at lab values, approach them with an open mind and don't say, well, my teacher said this or my teacher said this. Understand the concept. What's a Q? You know, on, on a sodium, high versus low, what's a Q? You know, well, low is a Q, not high. High is Y and dry. You know, so you want to kind of look at labs and the values differently in that sense. Okay, so let's get to the next column. So we said the sodium is 135 to 145. Then we move down to 3.5 to 5. And then we say 5 and then 1. So then we have our potassium. So now we're going to go to the next thing, which is chloride. Now, chloride is very interesting because who needs to know a chloride level? You know, not really. We don't really use it that much. We use it in this BMP for an anion gap and DKA. And we'll, look, we'll talk about that in another lecture. But the most important thing about chloride, and you're looking at the numbers, you want a general ballpark. Now, is chloride universal and do you call up the doctor about chloride levels? Generally, no, it's assessment. And you wanna look at the underlying cause and it's generally the boat coming. And when I'm talking about the boat coming, the boat coming is, is an example of, hey, there's a boat coming, there's a problem happening. So let's take dehydration. If a patient has dehydration and they have a low fluid volume, well, the heart rate will start to increase right, to, in response to that low food volume, because the heart rate is regulated by the brain, and the brain regulates the SA node. So therefore, in response to this low volume, the heart rate will start to increase. Now, it might go greater than 90, you know, and that's the boat, okay, and that's what we're talking about. So that means that recognizing that that, that is happening means that there is a potential problem, and that's called trending. So that's what we really want to look at when we're looking at lab values. And when we're looking at lab values is, is that when do we start to worry about it? All right, well, chloride is generally the boat. It means something's going on with this patient, but it doesn't necessarily mean call the doctor. It means look at the underlying cause and look what's going on. So let's look at the numbers. All right, so how do I remember this? Well, I add these two here, the four and the five, and that becomes nine. And once I have nine, then I put 10 there, and then I have 95 to 105, and there's my chloride, okay? And the principle is, is that, what do I need to know about it, right? High or low, look somewhere else, you know, diabetes or respiratory, and I'll talk more about that when we get into the fishbone lectures, but right now we're just focusing about the numbers right now. Okay, so the next one is CO2, okay, CO2. And CO2 is, you take this two, right, there's two of them. So two, 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 and six, right? So two plus two plus two equals six. So 22 to 26. Okay, now over here I have 22 to 28, right? Because it's a vague number, right? So when you're looking at this, you know, it's very important to know, you know, that NCLEX is not gonna give you 27 or 28. You know, they're going to give you 32 or 34 or something like that. And it will be in regards to a, a um, ABG, if you're looking at ABGs, when we're talking about bicarb and stuff like that. Um, but generally, um, I teach my class, you know, 22 to 26 now, right? Because I started seeing a little bit more references um, in uh, ABGs with 22 to 26 and with NCLEX questions, but that's a little bit gray, again. And I teach my students, you know, when you have gray areas, you're generally not tested on in the NCLEX, right? So because you're never calling a doctor about a, a CO2 level, 
right? So generally the rule of thumb is this, it's 22 to 26. If it is high or low, look somewhere else. What do we look for? Well, we look for, once again, diabetes or respiratory or peeing, puking or pooping or drains. You know, those are the main thing, diuretics, those type of things. Anything that's gonna affect fluid volume will affect CO2 and chloride. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, BUN and creatinine, right? So the numbers are there are again, we get into gray land. And the gray land is because nobody can really agree that this is gonna be the lab value. And that's problematic when you're a student because you start to pick up, oh, well, one teacher says this, or one teacher says this, or one class says this, or one, I'm in the hospital now, and, and this number's the range and stuff like that. Well, that's great, which means NCLEX isn't going to test you on gray areas. So what do we need to know? We need to know practice. And when do we need to call? What's most important? So we need a ballpark idea of what it is and what the number would be. All right, so what are the numbers? So the way I do this is, is that there's two different ways. All right, so creatinine. Okay, so I think of creatinine and I think create. Right? Create the world in seven days or nursing seven, you know? And I think about that creation story and so on and so forth. So create the world in seven days. Well, that gives me the seven. So I have 0 0.7, right? So I have my first start with creatinine. And then I say, okay, well, 7 point, 0 0.7, then I double that, right? 7 plus 7 is 14, so I have 0 0.7 to 1.4, and there's my creatinine, okay? So I have a general idea. Now, once again, high versus low, right? Well, low is chronic. We don't really worry about low too much. But high we worry about, and high is generally dry. And, you know, there's a little bit more to that. We'll say that more in our fishbone lectures. But, all right, so the next thing is the BUN, all right? Again, gray, all over the place. So, you know, I mean, those numbers are kind of all over the place. And, you know, once again, what do I need to know? And in the fishbone course, I'm going to talk about that. So let's just get to the numbers and what you need to know. So I take this 7 and I throw that up there, 7. All right? And then I take this 22 and I throw that over there. So I have 7 to 22. It gives me the ballpark range of that number. And then I have a basic idea about what it would be. All right. So the next thing is, is glucose. Now, glucose is a little bit um, all of the place as well, you know, because I mean, it depends on the facility you're working at, you know, and when you're going to, when they want you to worry about it. I've seen it 70 to 100. I've seen it 70 to 110. Um, so, which means it's a, it's a ballpark average. And so what I basically, basically will do is I take this six over here and I throw it over here and I have 60. Okay, so I have 60, and then I just basically times it by two, 60 to 120. And that gives me the basic range of that, but most nursing students know a general range for that. Now, what's a Q, high or low? Now, I talk about that in my fishbone class, and I talk about the little nuances about it, and why is it important, and so on and so forth. So let's go through this real quick and kind of talk about you know, what's most important, what's the numbers. Okay, so let's talk about it, right? So let's do the numbers. And when you're putting the numbers down, you know, um, this is the process. So sodium's here, 135 to 145, the only number that you need to know. Three to five, and then five to one. Okay, so there's your potassium. So your sodium and potassium. Next one is chloride. You add four and five together. That gives you a nine. You go to 10, and then you have five to five. Now that's your chloride. Next is your, your, your CO2. So I take that two, I go two, 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 add these two, three twos together, that gives you six, 20, 22 to 26. Then you have your BUN and creatinine. And I say that you create the world in seven days, 0 0.7, and then I go to 1.4, I double that, and that gives me my range. Then I take this 22, and I throw that up there, 22, and I take the seven, 
and it goes 7 to 22. I then take the 60, 6 over the air to 60, and then I double that, and that's 120. And those are your basic lab value ranges. All right, so let's talk about the next step where we talked about um, highs and lows, right? So highs and lows are all over the place, but most important is to know which one is acute and which one's not, you know? And that's, a, that's all relative because it all relative on a question that you might be getting. And so when you're looking at sodium, high versus low, you know, high is chronic and low is acute. Potassium, high and low is both. Chloride, high and low, both chronic means assessment. CO2, high or low is chronic. BUN, high is acute, low is chronic. And creatinine, high is acute, low is chronic. And then glucose, low is acute, high is chronic. Now we talk more about that, why that is in each of your each of the fishbone course, but that gives you the general overview. Then we talk about what to do to fix it. And then the NCLEX. So when you're looking at numbers in the NCLEX, they're only going to be very specific about high values. Um, what I mean by that is if they give you a sodium, that value is going to be higher than it normally is. What what means is, is that if it's a low sodium, they're going to give you 124 or 125. They're not going to give you 132 or 134, right? And if they're going to give you a high sodium, they're not going to give you 146 or 147. They'll give you 155. And potassium, you know, again, if it's low, they're going to give you 2.6 or 3. They're not going to give you 3.4, 3.3. Uh, for potassium, now 5.2, 5.1, 5.0, 0, they're not going to give. They might give you 5.5, but most likely they're going to give you 5.7, 6, 6.5. Um, that would make it definitely high. BUN and creatinine, uh, the BUN low, they generally don't give. High, 24, 28. You know, creatinine, high, not 1.4, 1.3, 1.5, it'll be two, it'll be 2.3, or just monitor the creatinine. Glucose, they're not going to dance around 59, 58, you know, because policy is different at every facility that you have. They're generally going to give you high glucose, you know, 200s, 300s, looking towards DKA and those types of things with diabetes and sepsis. Um, NCLEX is very specific, not so much on the memorization of the labs, but the concept behind it. And knowing those labs are all related to the general concept of the patient. And it's not so much just that we memorize labs, it's what do we do with the labs? Just because you have them, you know, it doesn't mean, well, oh, I saw the book said this, or I saw the book said that. That means nothing in the NCLEX or in practice. It's all about your practice and being that nurse and looking at lab values and understanding that the ending of the understanding of those lab values is about the concept. Why are you looking at these lab values and what are you doing about it? So a quick overview is sodium is brain, potassium is heart, you know, chloride and CO2 is lungs or endocrine, you know, BUN and creatinine is kidneys, and glucose is endocrine. So that's kind of the principle behind it. And then what do you do with it if it's high or low? When do you call the doctor and when do you know your lab value? So this is the conceptual camp when you start to look at the lab values. And the next part is we're going to take each of the electrolytes and each of these uh, parts of this BNP and, ex and exhaust them and kind of really look at them and what the treatment's behind and what you need to know for the NCLEX. Well, that's it. My name is Kevin and this is Nursing Camp and I am Nursing Camp and you can follow me at nursingcamp.com or Pinterest, uh, interest, Pinterest, interest and uh, Instagram or uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this, uh, this channel. Well, see you on the other side. Nurse on.